All right, everybody. Thank you for tuning in to a late night, um, late night copy of Let's Unbox Stuff with Cutthroat Cure. I was not planning on doing anything tonight. Just trying to move some stuff out of the way so I can make full use of my desk. I've been building a lot of models recently, as you can probably hear me moving. Um, and uh, so I wanted to make sure that, but since I got this put together, I wanted to make sure that we got a video of this. All right, so here we go. I don't know if this is working. Is it? Alright. Can't see. Why is this not? This is a pain in the ass. All right. Well, I'm gonna figure this out as we go. Stop I'm trying to update everything. I just stop. It's absolutely horrible, people. That uh, I don't turn my tablet on except for when I do live videos, so or when I'm actually playing a game. I don't know which one is more rare, um, but it seems at this point that my thing working is the real rare part. There we go. I definitely think the, the late planned fly by the seat is not always the best way to do this but all right so all right all right so here we go i've already been on for seven minutes and i already feel like a jagalo so uh today i got the all new black anchors industries um hearth gut hooch hauler um for the troll blood range and i am super excited because it is a, the most expensive model I've ever purchased, and B, um, by far one of the prettiest. So that is super exciting for me. I know that a lot of people have uh, had some, uh, what's the word I'm thinking of? Uh, there's been a lot of controversy about the uh, about this model, and which is definitely interesting. Um, to see uh, just how people have been reacting to it. I know that it set a lot of people off because, um, you know, they saw a price point and then they got a little pissy about it. And the question is, uh, what is, you know, the thoughts of the quality now that we actually have the model? And that's why I wanted to do this. Plus, I mean, I'll be honest with you, I was super excited that I got this, so I wanted to show people... Uh, what I got. Also, as an added bonus, just because I'm anybody who's actually watching and I'm pulling you in so late, um, I'm also going to do one of my newest uh, mini crates. I'll unbox that too, uh, just to show you a little bit of something. I've wanted to do more of them, but uh, this one also came, so I figured, heck, I'm already online, so let's do another one of these. Um, of course, if you have any questions, please ask. Um, you know, I'm doing this so that other people who may not have been able to purchase the um, Triple H would be able to at least see it. And then if they decide to spend the money down the road, they know exactly what they're getting. So first and foremost, pulling it out of the box, as you can see, I have not even opened this. So this is an experience for both of us. So the first thing I got, which was part of the pre-sale... Um, by pre-ordering it, was a Black Anchor Heavy Industries um, beer koozie. I don't drink uh, soda or beer, so this is definitely an interesting one for me. Um, you know, I'm not a real good troll player, it seems. But, uh, yeah, so I don't drink, so I think I might actually end up 
giving this away probably on the channel. So definitely watch for that because, as I said, I don't need this. Um, it's really cool and it's actually very well done. That's, uh, uh, you know, that's not like like a sticker or anything. So and it's pretty thick. So it'll probably keep your cooled drink very cold. So, yeah. So we'll do something with that because I don't need it. So let's get this big black box out of this brown box. Knock all my paints over while we're at it. I apologize for the uh, organization of my desk. I have not been able to paint as much as I want. So when I've been coming downstairs for uh, burst painting, it's been uh, just chaos. So, so here we go. So we've got the Black Anchors Industry Big Black Box. And we shall start by opening this up. All right. So it comes in a black box. This is cardboard. Um, you know, it does have a picture on the side, so that's exciting. I, As I had said, I wasn't 100% sure if there was going to be anything with the full art, but there we go. We can see that somebody has definitely... Uh, you know, definitely can use that. Uh, it's got the horde symbol right beside it, as you can kind of see in the light. I'm not sure. Um, it looks like it, but if not, you get the idea. But yeah, so it's got uh, the beautifully painted studio model, which was actually done um, by my dear friend, Brandon, and who works for the Privateer Press Studio, and it's absolutely wonderful, and he did an amazing job. And so it's exciting that we get to see a picture of that actually on the... Um, box. So they have the new Black Anchors logo on the back and uh, anchor on the side. And then they have uh, probably the sneakiest thing. They actually have their printed text. I'll put in the light so you can kind of see it, but you can't really read it. And I can't really read it either, actually having the box in my hand, uh, like the copyright and stuff. But it's kind of cool. It's kind of like secretive, I think, which is, I think, kind of a fun idea. So let's see. All right. So I'm setting the box down and I'm opening it up. So inside we have um, a box. It's basically the same type of box as we would get in the old Gargantuan's box. Um, as you can see, so I'm going to set this over the side because I do like that box. Um... So once you get inside of the box, it seems, is exactly what we would get in any regular Gargantuan's box. So um, kudos to Privateer Press for, uh, you know, making sure they use all the stuff. Um, so Bob Smith asked, said, it's a cool model, but that price point. Uh, Bob, I think that the quality and the amount of different pieces. And I think once we go through this model tonight, I think we'll see exactly why the price point might be there. I mean, I'm just looking in here. I mean, and it looks like just so many different kits. I mean, let's just pull this first part out just to answer your question. And if you look at simply like just this part, there's so many different like little pieces like any one of these could be a full kit, you know, you could have something like, you know, that could basically fill up a gore shade or, you know, anything. And I mean, when you take the different assortment of pieces and put them together as if you were buying different uh, sets, I mean, it does make sense, especially even from looking far away, just the quality of it. So I, I, I was very, I was very cautious at first. Um, I know that Dallas can definitely attest to that. And I, when I had seen the original price point, I came to him. But after having explained the reasoning for the price point and seeing basically how pretty of a model it was and how big it was, uh, I won't lie that I, I was actually excited to pull the trigger at that point. And I think all that excitement even today, it may not be something about... It may not be something that I would buy multiples of, but, you know, I definitely think that there's a lot of quality in this. And hopefully going through this boxing, we'll, we'll be able to see that. So I just wanted to answer that, Bob. So thanks for tuning in, by the way. 
So, other than that, we've got uh, the usual plastic box here. I'll set that right there. We've got the big ass base, which is our normal gargantuan and battle engine base. And we're going to open the other side. It comes with, um, so the hooch, the hooch actually drum is actually in, um, a very large piece of the foam that they include in blisters. So that's kind of neat. Uh, it's actually very well packaged. Um, and I will tell you one thing, this, this bad boy is weighted. There is some, there is some weight to this. It's actually much heavier just this piece, which I'm going to unwrap in a second, it's actually much heavier than the actual uh, block house. Uh, so that's exciting. Um, set that there. We've got some side pieces. Uh, and each of these side pieces have um, like ornate shields on them. And, you know, for the most part, most of these shields are pretty different. Um, I mean, they used a little bit of the you know, combination like this shields, you know, there and stuff. But, you know, you have to understand that when they created this, they had to create two different parts. So even though, you know, this shield and this shield is a duplicate, um, you know, they still had to sculpt these two different parts separately from each other. So that's kind of interesting. So we'll set those there. Hopefully those are in. Yep, those are still in. Yeah, it feels like it's solid. So John Oliver just asked... Uh, the, he that he had heard that it's solid resin, and I would have to concur with that. It's extremely heavy, so um, I can believe that it's uh, solid resin, um, which talks more to the quality. Um, so, and it also comes with an instruction booklet, which, you know, I've seen some of the newer kits come with this. Um, and while it may not be like full color or anything, like we need that, um, it is highly detailed. And just, I mean, just looking at the pictures alone in this, like, they're very detailed pictures of the items and stuff. And, um, so that's kind of cool. It's only one-sided, so hopefully that'll be easy enough. Um, but we'll see. So I'm going to set that down as well. All right, so let me go to the chats. So Sheridan, I believe, says, I personally feel that they could have cut down on the fiddly bits so they didn't need to cast as many pieces. That might have cut down on the price. Uh, Sheridan, I can agree with you that while po very possibly if they had cut down on the pieces that they included in this box, the pricing may have been cheaper, no, less man hours, less sculpting, less casting. But I, I will agree that very, uh, very often a lot of players and people who do a lot with the models have said that they wanted a model they wanted models to get more detailed and be bigger and i think the major point of black anchor studios is the fact that you know they can include stuff that's very large like this now it makes it a little bit interesting when you're using it for your army because this isn't just your your basic uh modeling kit you know it's not a display piece per se that you're building uh, you know, to paint for a competition and only for a competition, um, like you might see from some of the other uh, modeling companies. Uh, you know, this can be and is uh, intended to be a play piece, but in retrospect, for how large it is and already what I'm seeing, I'm I'm not terribly disappointed about the price, and I have to say that's definitely something um, that changed for me from you know when I first saw it to receiving it now so um where is my where is my exacto knife yeah mine's connected sorry mm -mm, because my phone's at like 12 percent but i'm recording no. all right i'm looking for an exacto knife there we go. All right. I agree. I agree. But, you know, as we know, you know, when people first saw the pricing of Gargantuans, they were a little blown away. And, um, 
you know, that's that's something that's going to happen. Sometimes you're going to have expensive models, um, and hopefully the quality of this model far exceeds my belief. So let's get into the nitty gritty pieces of this um, so that I don't have to keep everybody here all night and um, we can actually see what we got working with. So obviously we have the instructions. That's a really nice touch. You got lots of different uh, little bits. It's got a little bit of um, some instructions here that talks about it. It's got the art. Otherwise, I will come back to this, but that's a nice touch. That way I'm not just trying to figure it out by myself. We also have the big base. We know the big base is here. We know what we're going to do with it. We don't need that in the in the thing. So let's get to the main part. So we've got these big pieces. We got the big old box, the big old jug, and then these two side pieces. No sleep for me, says Sheridan. So um, let's just go right to the jug, just because it's the biggest piece. And, you know, I know I'm excited to see this, so I'm going to cut right here. Um, so quick tip tutorial, this, this foam right here that you see that comes with all, mo almost every blister and now with, uh, these bigger models, uh, if you tear pieces of this off, you can use it for speckling for such as like, uh, weathering and other such things. It works perfectly. You could probably make a piece like this last, um, you know, forever, depending on how much you're doing. So. Man, this, this thing is so heavy. I'm very, very surprised. But you can, like, the detail on it is just crazy. Like, you can see all the grains. And I'm not seeing, like, any mold lines. So, very well cast. Very, very well cast um, by Privateer Press. Um... I see very minimal cleanup. I see like a little bit I might have to do here, but I mean with the X-Acto knife, since it's resin, it's probably pretty simple and you want to be careful because you definitely don't want to destroy any of the detail, but it seems, of course, I probably want a sharper blade than this one because this one's seen a better days. So it does have one little mold line, but the good news about that mold line is it seems to be underneath where they're going to put the top carrier. So that's uh, a good function on Privateer Press, good for them for thinking ahead. Um, there's also a little bit of a molding ridge here on the back part around the edge, but it's right where uh, the cask would come together. So that's not too different. So they, they definitely mix that into there. Um, it's got this little bag on the back. I'm not exactly sure. Probably a back seat. Um, yeah. I'm excited to do some, like, golds on this part. And, but yeah, this thing is solid. Um, this is one piece, so. I mean. Yeah, that's, you can hear how solid that is. All right, next. So we've got the two side pieces here. Um, as you can see, they have these really pretty shields on them. Um, the shields are very much like the ones that are included in the there that are included in the um, what do you call it? The Creel Warriors uh, box. So that's kind of a nifty little thing. So if you decide to do any updates or little changes, you have this. Um, so that's kind of a cool tie-in. Uh, so they have the outside, and I'm gonna go piece by piece. Also. Uh, thank you for joining in, Daniel. I know you were one of the unlucky few that I uh, definitely convinced to purchase this, and I bet you're waiting with bated breath to get yours. So hopefully you can live vicariously through mine for now. So looking at this piece, um, and as I said, I'm going to speed up a little bit uh, in a bit just because I know that we have a lot to go through. So there's a little bit of, there's a little bit of extra mold I'll have to clip off here and a little bit here and here but it's nothing that you can't do with a pair of clippers a little bit there a little bit there 
but very minimal. The cool part is, is that any of the, they definitely took time to consider that if they were going to put, if they were going to have any excess in any areas, it was put into areas that would be easily covered up by the rest of the model. And that right there is appreciated, especially from a modeling standpoint. Uh, when you look at the top of it, which is where all the detail and everything else is going to be, uh, the model is pristine. It's absolutely clean as a whistle. It is smooth. I mean, I'm definitely going to have to wash this um, to get the uh, casting agent off it. I can feel it on there. So definitely always make sure to wash and clean your models because, um, you know, you want to make sure you get that casting agent off because if you do not, uh, when you paint it, you will probably end up having issues and paint will come off it easier. So let's get this as close as possible so you can see the details. So you can see the wood grain. You can see the shields. Um, it's got shields on the front too. Uh, yeah, so that's nice. I like that. So um, they, I like the... I like the variation they did in the different pieces. So you have metals, you have your wood grains, you have your, your leathers and your cloth. Um, so this is going to make for a very um, exciting piece that you can kind of play around with. All right. So this one very much like the other one, and I'm not going to go through both of them. So let's pull over the box and let's get this bad boy open. I can definitely say that all of these pieces together is extremely weighted. So definitely know that when you're when you're picking this bad boy up. So it's definitely if you add any actual substantial weight to the base, this thing's not going anywhere. So right off the bat, we're looking at the the top part that goes into the where the uh, catapult goes. And once again, this part has shields that line the entire edge so once again another little fun added detail that you get to see and hopefully these are coming in fine and clear I'm gonna watch the video for a second so it looks like it's coming in pretty clear um, yeah so once again we have a little bit more excess on the bottom but like the other piece we're noticing that it's in a place that'll be easily covered because it's where it attaches to another piece of the model and that's appreciated um, but otherwise, this is very detailed. There's even little um, rivets in the side wood here uh, on the inside. So for anybody that wants to have a crazy time painting rivets, there you go. Um, so I'm going to set the box up here and pull pieces out and then pull them into the, the, the area. So we've got the main axle. Um, this is another good piece. Obviously, this is where we attach the tires to. Um this has uh, a main axle, and it's got these, like, uh, shocks. I wouldn't expect Trolls to be um, a faction that had shocks, but, you know, it looks like they tried to update themselves for this one. Once again, we have a little excess material on top, um, but like every piece else we've seen, it's going to be easily hidden. Lots of different textures, wood, metal, you know, I'm excited for that. Let's go through. Um, we've got one, two, three, four tires, and the tires are, uh, what seem to be metal. They seem to have, like, this metal outline on the edge. Um, it's kind of like a truck. Truckers have, like, the spokes, so they're, like, sharpened, like a chariot. And then they've got wood in the middle with rivets and they even added some uh, detail on the inside so um, for anybody that's painting the inside of the wheel that's exciting and that seems to be uh, across the entire range all four tires very much the same um, they do have a little bit of like this piece has a little bit of excess you can see there but it looks like that's easily clipped and filed down uh, you're just gonna get that with uh, any sort of mold yeah, it does. I think the war wagon's a little bit bigger. I actually have mine here just in case. So, John Oliver says that the war wagon has similar wheels. So, um, I actually brought that bad boy here just in case that that would come up. They're actually a little bit bigger um, than the uh, 
wheels on the hooch hauler. They actually fit on the inside. Um, that actually looks kind of cool. So we've got that. Uh, so yeah. And so we could see this. But I mean, already, if you were to take this bad boy and pop it on top of there, it's, I mean, just the hooch itself is almost as big as the entire war wagon itself. So I mean, that's substantial enough. All right, continuing on, we've got one little polar bear, two little polar bears. Um, these polar bears have a lot of armor on them. Uh, I'll put this one down for now. This one actually has a beer mug underneath its neck. I don't know if that's so it can, like, uh, like a St. Bernard revive lost trolls that the hooch hauler would come across. Um it has some excess material around the feet, but once again, uh, this is a joy because it has a ton of different textures and materials all in one piece. So coming to uh, coming to the different things, we've got metals for the armor. You have fur, you have skin, you have bone, you have stone from the runes, you have wood. All of that in one giant piece and leather. So, I mean, that's something that just that piece right there is, looks like it's going to be exciting. And if you like one piece, we've got two of them um, for any people who are excited to paint that. So then past that, we've got, uh, let's see if I can find it, the rest of the bears. Sorry for my arm. Uh, we've got their legs. Uh, they seem to be two different parts, so obviously this leg goes to this bear. That's actually a pretty smooth fit, and where they, you, how they use the armor, they actually cover up the contact point, so it doesn't look like you're going to need any green stuff or sculpting clay for that, or P3 aluminum putty. So, uh, and then they put the, the straps around the edge, so that's really good. And for the other one, this one, a little bit, this one could have been a little bit better, I think. But also, it looks like I have some excess material around the edge here, so that's going to cause uh, it to stick out a little bit. But it looks like once I get that excess material out of there, it'll smooth right in. Okay. Okay. Um, next, we've got the crow's nest, which uh, is absolutely glorious. It's got rope and metal and, and uh, wood, so that's cool. A little bit of excess material on the bottom. We've got the actual catapult. Now, the catapult so far is... The one piece I'm a uh, I don't want to say disappointed, but it's not as uh, it's not hiding everything as uh, as much. So we do have some excess material on the bottom and on the back, which isn't an issue. Um, but this is the first time I've actually seen a mold line on the entire model so far, um, a, an obvious one. And it's actually on the top of the it's on the top of the actual springboard. So maybe this is where one of the trolls will go. So maybe it'll cover that up a little bit, but. I could definitely see uh, maybe needing to sand that down a little bit. I would be scared to do it too much to lose detail, but, um, you know, it's got to be done. It does have a lot of little nifty little bolts, and it is it does go down the side of it. Um, this is about the only piece so far that I've been unhappy, like somewhat unhappy with, but that's just, you know... I, I don't understand all the things that sculptors and casters have to go through, so there's only so much we can do. Uh, CJ Hughes says, show your taps, show your taps, show your taps. Uh, so here we go. We've got the, the seat. It looks like they're traveling a little bit of style. Um, it's got a little excess material here on the edge, as you might see. But for the most part, this has no mold lines, um, which is nice. And uh, it looks like it's going to fit pretty well onto the front of it. I would assume that this probably goes, probably not there. Maybe there. 
somewhere like there. I'll have to look at the handy dandy book that we got with it. Let's see what else we got. Um, so this is obviously the driver that goes in this seat. Um, this is his body. So this bad boy has so much detail. This is ridiculous. So this right here, ladies and gentlemen, is where we're going to see the absolute um, skill that Privateer Press has really been putting into their models. And I hope you guys can see how detailed that is. So this model right here just has belt buckles and like a uh, cloth shirt and different types of armor and you know his toes and everything and even like a rope braided necklace uh a rope braided necklace for his rune stones to hang off of which is impressive in general uh this is very exciting and uh shows a lot of detail uh especially for a piece you know while the rest of the the triple h is the main focus like you're gonna have little beauties like this um spread all around it that'll help out uh bring some life to it so we've got a keg um i hear there's a few of them on it so here's one of them uh We've got the, right here, we've got the giant uh, top parts and a spout. I'm going to look at the directions because I'm not 100% sure where this goes. So these look like they go up on top. Well, this one does, so I'm going to put this one away. So these two bad boys look like they go up top. Um, it has two of them. And it has uh, flames coming out of the top, like steel flames. And, uh, it has, um, you know, it's, it has a little bit of, a, you know, um, a little bit of excess on it, but that's not too bad. Some cloth, um, I could feel the resin, but they did go ahead and to make sure that we enjoy it, they did put a little, uh, let's see if I can get that to focus. They put a rune, like, burned into the i mean like etched into the lantern which is cool because when you do the flames that are on top you could probably do some interesting uh like osl coming from that like it's kind of showing what's burning inside uh and these are kind of done with some uh like you can climb up on it uh so that's kind of cool and there is it looks like there is an extra piece that comes in later um that will go onto that so we'll get to him this piece, though, which has a tap on it of some sort, I am not 100% sure where this piece goes. So I'm going to look at this book and see if I can figure that out. So this piece seems to go, survey says, um, on the back. So it does, so this piece seems to go on the back where this is so it looks like it has an extra piece that goes into this so it looks like this bad boy goes here and then this bad boy uh actually goes into that so that's actually kind of kind of interesting a little bit of engineering there uh this little contact point right here actually goes into this oops we got a piece down and that piece actually goes right there and that's actually really that's actually really sturdy even without glue so that's that's kind of cool and this this piece which we just pulled out of nowhere is actually like a boiler so it's actually got like uh, a, a, a vent for you to like throw like what might be like kindling or something it's obviously a still this is a moonshine still that goes on the back of the hooch hauler so that's a nifty little idea and then this has some like steampunk you got your little steampunk pour i guess you know pours you go straight from the the moon sh from the still so so they could taste test make sure it's nice and hearty pull that back to the side there i don't think i'm really gonna need my blade anymore I'm going to pull that out of the picture and use something else um, to point stuff out, like a brush. 
Okay, so what else we got? All right, so to clear this one out, we've got another piece of... So this, obviously, is the piece that connects the bears to the hooch hauler. Um, it also has a lot of uh, wood grain detail, as you can... Let me see if I can get that to focus. I apologize for the quality. But if you can see the, the, the grain there... Um, and it has, uh, you know, a little bit of excess, but for the most part, it's a pretty clean model. And let's go, what else we got here? And then there's a ton of little, there's a ton of little guys. So we've got a paw to one of the bears. This is the front paw. Uh, this is made out of metal. Um... I never understand the rhyme nor reason for um, the sculptors to switch between metal and resin, but there obviously was a good reason for it, because they did it. So, um, we've got the hanging kegs that are in a sack. It's got a little bit of excess on the bottom. Um, hopefully that goes on the inside and not the outside, because uh, it looks like that's in a... Uh, it would be hard to recreate the wire, the netting, but for the most part, that looks like pretty good. Uh, the quality on it's really good. It has a lot of. They even did the grain on the inside of the bag, so have fun painting that. And more pieces to the still. Another like little connector point. I need to get a better spot so I can show people this. There you go. So it's got like a little connector piece. Um, obviously goes to the still. So any pieces anybody wants to see that I've gone over so far, definitely, you know, just say it in the comments and I'll bring it up. Um, you know, this is as much about you getting to ask your questions as it is me getting to get excited over this model. All right. So here's another keg, but this keg obviously attaches to the, let me get out of my chair. This keg obviously attaches to the um, still. So let me get my little fat fingers out of there. So once again, a lot of grain, a lot of detail. We're just filling up my table with all these pieces. All right, so. so all right. So now we've got some duders. Um, so I'm pretty sure we've got two bears. Um, what looks like six different dudes, um, different pieces. What is this? Oh, that is a metal troll hand. Sorry. Once again, we're definitely seeing a ton of detail in the knuckles. You got the growths. Um, you know, a little bit of cleanup. We got a mold line right there. If you can see that. But, for the most part, pretty good. Uh, what else we got? What is this? Uh, oh, we got two hands. It's obviously pulling a lever of some sort. Uh, that's going to be fun to find out where this goes. I don't even know how I'm going to paint this. Like, I don't know if I'm going to have to paint it in like a hundred different pieces, or if I'm just going to have to attach what I can and figure it out from there, but we'll see. Alright, so we got some of the guys that go on here, and these pigs are super fun. Uh, got one that's like yelling, and he's got a lot of little detail and stuff. That's definitely more the reason that they need to re release the burrowers in a uh, resin because these guys are a little bit bigger, but they're great. Uh, it's actually funny, I'm pretty sure these guys are probably the same exact size as the original old metal Creel Warriors. I think very similar in size, so I'm glad to see pigs getting a little bit bigger. And here's their two buddies. And this guy looks like he's holding his butt. It's kind of funny. Uh, I think he's the one who holds on to the rack, but just in this precarious position, it looks like He's uh, getting ready to uh, like squat or something. Just goofy. And this guy, this guy definitely has this guy right here has a Bruce Campbell chin. I enjoy him. 
He's fun. He's got one of those chins that could kill. Um, we've got a flaming connector piece. So obviously this is to ignite something. Um, so that's kind of cool. We got another hand. We've got like an extra cloth piece. I'm not exactly sure where this goes, but obviously somewhere on it. Um, but that's kind of a cool little function. It's pretty, it's got a good bit of detail. Man, I'm actually starting to get tired of showing off parts because there's so many. Here's another uh, paw. It's kind of like, how do you do? We've got another keg. I heard, told you there was a few. Um, this is a cool piece. So this connects to it somehow. And this piece is literally a drinking horn, some mugs, and another drinking horn with, like, different things. This is such a cool piece because it's, like, so much great detail and just, like, a lot of flavor. So John Al Oliver says, I think the cloth hangs up on the crow's nest. I would not be surprised. I think you're right. I think it actually hangs between the two midsections. So, okay. And we've got another, like, little clasp. And here is another cool piece, like the one we just saw earlier. It's got... Uh, sorry, flip it over. Different horns and flagons and, you know, mugs. And then we just got a bunch of tiny little pieces. And there's actually, like, what looks to be a whelp. There is a whelp attached to it. He is tiny and he is metal. Um, it really shows the difference. Then we've got a bunch of little tiny pieces in here. I don't know if I want to go through each one of them individually, but uh, it's a lot of hands, fingers. Here's the head to the driver. He's like screaming. Sounds interesting. Um, we've got like. I said I wasn't gonna go through all these, but here I here I am doing it. We got flaming flagons. It's kind of cool. Sorry, I keep having to put my hand in here, fellas, uh, ladies and gentlemen. Um, I'm just trying to get it to focus for you all. Yeah, so a lot of little tiny pieces. I'm going to pull out just so we can see the extent of what all you get when you purchase the Hearthgut Hooch Hauler. I just got to be real careful because I really don't want to lose any of this. All right. And that's what we've got. That is a lot of pieces. Um, and this obviously got some little, some excess. So I'm going to dump that out and get back in my chair, move back up. So that's what we got, ladies and folks. That is a lot of pieces. Um, and I have to say that going through all of this and looking at it from a wide perspective, very minimal mold lines. I do. You do see a lot. You see. You do see a decent amount of excess on each model. The placement of where they obviously molded those pieces is very well done. Um, the detail is phenomenal. I. I am. I am extremely impressed and very happy with the detail on this model. It's actually very daunting um, because. I'm a very detail-oriented uh, painter, so seeing this much uh, details that I'm definitely going to fixate on is uh, kind of scary. And I mean, they they have cloth wraps, and I mean, here is Mr. Bruce Campbell, uh, pig himself. I do enjoy him. So yeah, so that is a lot of pieces. I will definitely say that um, out of all of these pieces that I went through tonight, uh, still. My least favorite is the actual catapult, but upon actually reviewing the uh, upon reviewing the actual 
um, instruction manual right here where we actually see this pretty obvious uh, mold line. So let me stand up so I can show you. So where you see this very obvious mold line right there is actually where the barrel goes. So while it sucks to have a mold line like that that's going to obscure some detail, um, they did place it in an area that is going to get covered. So even if you have to sand that down or do some stuff like that, you're, you know, it's going to be covered. So if they put that much forward thought into it, which I believe they did, good on them because I think that is the little stuff like that definitely helps, um, especially when you're trying to excuse the price point. Um, all in all, I have to say, I am extremely, extremely impressed by the quality of this. I did not, I have not gotten to see the Dracodal in person, and uh, Scar of the Broken Coast, who is currently on pre-order now, I have not seen her either. Uh, so this is my first Black Anchors piece. Um, so, and I have to say that uh, I would definitely purchase one again if I needed one. And I'm not upset that I purchased this one. So I think that the while the 165 seemed a little crazy at first, uh, seeing the quality and how many pieces it has, I, I'm not surprised at the price point, and I am completely fine with that. Uh, and here is an old war wagon. Uh, so you can kind of see, like, there's just a lot. Um, so, yeah, counterpart. As I said, once again, I'll show again that this, this thing is solid and is almost as big as the entire old... Uh, war wagon itself so that's cool so let me put all these pieces away because i don't want to lose it um and i will just show off my quickly my new um mini crate thing i got because i have people on here and i'm pretty excited about it Thank you for anyone who is still tuned in. If you have any questions, ask them now before I put all these pieces away. Because I am not going to dig after I get this away. Unless you really want me to, and then I've, I'll probably dig at that point. Ooh-wee. I feel bad for the person that had to pack all this in here because this is there's so much in here that you have to like really like consider where you're putting everything. And I don't even I know this was in here, so probably like that. The video of me putting this away is as long as the original video. All right. There's that, there's that, there's that. Put this dude's body in here. And last but not least, there we go. And that is now packed up. And then we've got the big jug and we've got some side pieces. I'm going to put this bad boy back in its box for now because tonight is not its night to be worked on. I've got to do some cleanup. I've got to do some cleaning. Um, actually going to put this back into this just to make sure that it's safe put it back in there this bad these bad boys are right back in here goes there this right there okay this this box and this will go on to my to be clean shelf. So uh, that was Black Anchors Industry, the Hearth Gut Hooch Hauler, or Triple H. Okay. So what did we get from Mini Crate? Uh, for anybody who doesn't know, Mini Crate is something that Privateer Press uh, showed off and started uh, Lock and Load 2017 this last year. Um, and what it is is a subscription month-to-month uh, -month service, um, much like Loot Crate. Um, but instead, you get miniatures, um, and miniatures that are limited edition, one-of-a-kind, and basically you only get when they come out in Mini Crate. 
and Privateer Press is fun enough to do uh, a silly little destruction video with each of the molds after they're done to kind of show you that they're not going to come out again. And they do provide this awesome box that's got like little details, you know, you got a little tentacle and eyeballs and stuff, and it's packaged just like that. I'm not going to show that off too much. I don't want y'all to come find me. And so what did I get recently with my Hearthcut Hoochaller? We got, survey says, Bloody Bradigan Pit, um, which is their most recent. I think it's five out of six. It's the fifth model in the series. We have one more before a new subscription. Um, you can buy these month to month. Or you can subscribe for six months. Uh, it's a great deal. I absolutely love it. I have a ton of that. I have every one that they've come out with so far. And as long as they keep releasing them, I will keep buying them. So this is pretty cool. Um, all that comes in the kit is uh, one base, as I just threw. And Mr. Uh, Bradigan Pitt himself, who's kind of like a come and get it pose. He's got a little soap that says soap, and I think it was interesting that they used a very similar font to a book slash movie series. Um, he's wearing a fur coat, and he's got a cigarette. He is awesome. And they even have the chain around his neck just to reminisce of the old version of him. And then with each mini crate, for anybody who knows, it comes with a card, and the card has uh, the name of the model which number it was in the series. Um, so this was the fifth mini crate we've gotten. So this is number five. Um, it's got some of the details, how they envisioned it, the actual pose, as that you might have seen if you were one of the studio um, developers. It's got a little bit of information on the back, a little picture, um, which is really cool. Uh, who it was based on, and then it says the first rule of mercenary contracts is... You do not talk about mercenary contracts. So, good advice from Bloody Bradigan Pick. And these boxes are awesome. There was a person on the War Machine and Hordes Facebook painting group that actually noticed that these things, uh, I'll use this one because I have it, actually fit the Privateer Press paints in perfectly. Uh, you can fit them in three long. I'm pretty sure, I think you can fit 15. Uh, so, five rows, maybe... 12 or 15 in here uh so if you're traveling and you need to take uh just some paints and store them all in one place uh these do work for that too um so yeah i'll put this back together so i can put it with the rest of them that i've gotten um i absolutely love this idea i've been very happy with this one and uh I will be a subscriber as long as they keep doing it. So if you didn't get a chance, go check it out at, uh, you know, Privateer Press Mini Crate. And, uh, yeah, a lot of information there. So that is all I have for you folks. Um, you know, I am excited that people got to join in and see the Hearthcut Hooch Hauler and my messy-ass desk. Um, sorry it was so late, and sorry I had a little bit of technical difficulties at the beginning, but otherwise, um, we had a good time. Let's see a little fun, uh, uh, Valka. Hopefully to be on a channel soon. But otherwise, uh, thank you for tuning in. Uh, of course, if you like any of the material we do, we, you know, you're always welcome to subscribe to Advanced Maneuvers, and... You know, we will be breaking this video down and be putting it on YouTube if it's of any good quality. And hopefully this first look into the Hearthgod Hooch Hauler was entertaining and informative. And hopefully it got you excited to uh, paint it. Uh, so Ashley Helam asks, will I be painting this? I will be. I have some big plans for it, so I will be painting it, uh, so definitely, you know, watch back for, uh, either updates or the finished, uh, material, and, uh, because I'm excited to do it, I don't know 100% what I'm doing with it, but, uh, I have some big ideas, and hopefully it'll, it'll pan out, um, I've been excited with some of my current work, so hopefully that'll work, and, then John 
says, thank you for sharing. Uh, John, you are very welcome. I enjoyed it. And thank you for tuning in. You were the first person to jump in. And you're still here at the end. So that's appreciated. Um, otherwise, uh, if there's any questions, I'll probably give this about a minute. Awesome. Yeah. So thank you for following my Instagram. Um, I do uh, do a little bit of that. Hopefully, I will get this bad boy soon put on some finished work on him he's very rough i had done a lot of work on him and then i've since gone back and updated him and uh my next bad boys are these glorious ladies uh hopefully you saw them you probably saw my update of work i've been building a lot of stuff recently uh having a son and lots of work makes it difficult sometimes to paint so getting to uh getting to build stuff recently has been um very uh therapeutic otherwise um so definitely as i said before i will be giving away the the hearthgut hooch hauler limited um pre-release uh gift that came in the box uh it's the Black Anchor Heavy Industries Beer or Soda Coolie, whatever is your drink of choice. Um, I will be giving this out on the channel. I'll probably do something on Monday, uh, come up with something funny or exciting um, to you know kind of get people involved. So definitely watch for that. And if nobody has any more questions, I think I will call it quits and let you all go to bed. So... Have a good night. Thank you for tuning in. And um, this was a video brought to you by the Advanced Maneuvers channel.